In today's video, I'm sharing with you the 10 secrets to perfect digestion. Hello my honeys, if you are new here, hey, I'm Healthy Emmy. I'm a nutritionist, a weight loss specialist, and the creator of the Slimon Starch Program, where you work with me, as well as a mindset coach and nutrition coach to lose weight on a plant-based diet. If you want to do that, click the link in the down bar. Now I know that the title of this video was very sexy and intriguing, a flat stomach. What are the secrets? Well, let's be realistic first and foremost. The stomach is an elastic organ, meaning that it is supposed to expand and shrink. In order for us to digest food and properly assimilate the nutrients that we eat, our stomach has to expand and contract to turn the food into chyme so that it can be absorbed within our intestines. So if after you eat a meal, your stomach is a little bit bigger, that is normal. We're not supposed to have a perfectly flat stomach every minute of every day. That being said, we're not supposed to look like we are pregnant after every single meal. I really feel, not to brag, but kinda to brag, I can do that, you and me, I feel like I've cracked the code with digestion. I have really figured this thing out and my digestion is 10 out of 10, baby. I'm pulling back the curtain, here are my secrets. Secret number one, 30 plants per week. Wow, this is a big number. And do I even get in 30 plants every single week? Probably not, but it's a great number to aim for. Dr. Will Bolswitz, who wrote the book Fiber Fueled, if you haven't read it, you definitely should. I'll link that in the down bar so that you can get your own copy. But he says to aim for 30 plants per week. The good news, spices and herbs do count. So if you make yourself a nice stew or a chili, throw in a, different, a bunch of different herbs and spices to hit your 30. What this means is that over the course of the week, you should be eating 30 different foods from the produce section, which also includes herbs and spices. Like I said, I know that 30 is a really high number and don't stress yourself out if you haven't yet reached that. But keep in mind what the bottom line here, which is that variety of fiber is the key to a healthy gut microbiome. Fiber is only found in plant foods and study after study after study shows that the more variety you have in your diet over the long term, the healthier your gut microbiome is going to be. Tip number two is simplicity in your meals. Wait a minute, Emmy, you just said that you're supposed to get variety in your meals and now you're talking about simplicity? Yes, I am. I want you to have variety over the long term, but on a meal by meal basis, you're actually better off not having so many ingredients in that one meal. I know I said throw a bunch of herbs and spices in there. That's okay. But when it comes to the actual bulk in the food that you're having, if you're having digestive issues, you're likely going to be better off having meals that only have a few ingredients in them, keeping your meals very, very simple, not making crazy recipes with 10 zillion ingredients in them so that your stomach doesn't have too much work to do with every single meal. So if you're making a kiss meal, my slim on starch clients, you know what those are. If you're making a kiss meal, a keep it simple sweetie meal, only have a few ingredients, not a million at once, because you don't want your gut to become overwhelmed. Tip number three, chew your food to consistency of applesauce. Digestion starts actually in our brain, but a lot of digestion is done in the mouth. There are enzymes within our mouth that work to help break down the food so that by the time it gets to our stomach, our stomach can do its job. Unfortunately, most people swallow their food after one or two bites, the food gets to the stomach and the stomach says, whoa, Emmy, Cindy, Carissa, Latoya, James, you are supposed to do way more chewing up there in the mouth and you didn't do it and now we are irritated because we have a lot more work to do. We are gonna become inflamed, swollen, and bloat. You have to make sure that you chew, chew, chew your food, get on that chew, chew train. Tip number four is one that I practice, and according to my insight timer, I've been practicing this for about 
250 days I think I'm at of meditating before every meal. So I meditate before most meals. I meditate every single day without fail. I have my Insight Timer, that's the app that I use to track my days that tells me that I've been doing it consecutively for hundreds of days, but you want to get your body into rest and digest before eating. We spend so much of our time in fight or flight, which is really, really tough on our digestive tract. V, my little Versace, my little kitty cat. The cats are just parked. They're just parked beneath the tripod right now. We spend a lot of our lives in fight or flight, which is really tough in the digestive tract because when we are in fight or flight, blood actually flows away from our stomach and it flows toward the limbs, the arms and the legs to prepare you to actually run away from a predator. So this is what's going on in your body when you're in fight or flight. You have to get your body into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest, so that your body can say, ah, okay, we can focus on digestion. Because if you're running around like a mad woman, mad man, mad whatever, all day long, then your body is not going to be able to denote proper energy to digestion and you'll get bloated. Secret number five, mindful meals. Be present when you are eating. Part of the eating process includes that we are actually there, smelling the food, seeing the food, hearing the food, touching the food, tasting the food. We have five senses and honestly, when most people are eating, they're not tapping in to any of them. They're engaged in their work, they're watching the Netflix show, they're thinking about the stressful thing that's coming up 16 years from now, their mind is somewhere else. Be here now. When you're eating your food, eat your food. When you're folding your laundry, fold your laundry. When you're doing your work, do your work. When you're playing with your kids, play with your kids. When you're eating your food, eat your food. Be there and be present so that you can give the signal to the gut that it's time to digest. Tip number six is fermented foods. Dr. Will B talks about these in the book Fiber Fueled, and he even teaches you how to make your own fermented foods. Healthy Dad started making sauerkraut and he put that in the Healthy Dad cookbook and you can get that there. But fermented foods contain probiotics. Probiotics are the microorganisms that are good for our gut. We have good gut bacteria and we have not so great bad bacteria. We want to cultivate as much good bacteria and a variety of good bacteria as we can. And the inclusion of fermented foods such as sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, tempeh, uh, these foods are helpful in cultivating a diverse variety of gut microbiota. Ye these do have higher sodium, so they are going to have salt in them. So it's give and take here. So it's not gonna be perfect because it is higher sodium, but if you are struggling with your gut health, this may be something that you could benefit from. Tip number seven is smaller meals more often. So if you are going long stretches without eating and then you have a whole ginormous whole food plant-based meal, that's gonna be a lot on your stomach to handle because the volume is just so much bigger. When you're eating a whole food plant-based diet, you are eating larger volumes of food. So you may be better off eating smaller meals more often as opposed to overloading your stomach with so much food to handle in one go around. Tip number eight is give your gut a break overnight. I know that many people are very intrigued and infatuated by the intermittent fasting craze, but really you do your own intermittent fasting overnight and 12 hours is perfectly fine. You know, if you go to bed at eight o'clock and then you have your first meal at 8 a.m., that's a good amount of time to give your gut enough time to rest. So during the day, if you're struggling with bloating, eating smaller meals more often, but then over the nighttime, allowing your gut some time to sleep, which leads into secret number nine, which is go to sleep. A lot of people stay up until midnight and at 1130, they get hungry. Well, of course, you're going to get hungry at 1130 if you haven't eaten since 6 p.m. when you had your dinner. 
I always say eat when you're hungry, but honestly, it's 1130. You should be asleep. So go to sleep to allow your gut some time to rest. If you stay up, then you're going to get hungry and then you're going to eat. That's going to be extra calories during the day and you're not going to give your gut any time to rest. Tip number 10 is be consistent, be patient, and play the long game. You're not going to fix these gut issues overnight. You didn't get these gut issues overnight. And these gut issues are going to persist if you go in with the expectation that they're going to be solved by tomorrow. Expectations are the root of all despair. So if you go in thinking, I'm gonna fix my gut issues by next week, and then you don't have that happen, you're likely going to become very frustrated, think that you're a medical mystery, and those gut issues are going to become even worse because of the stress. The gut is the second brain. But I assure you, with patience, consistence, kindness to your body, and compassion with yourself, the body will prove to you that it has the incredible ability to heal. And it will heal if you two work together, you and the body. If you need more personalized help, then please do. Just click the link in the down bar and apply to work with me, and we'll figure this thing out. I'm obsessed with gut and digestive health and helping you be at peace. So click the link in the down bar. If you made it to this point in the video, comment happy tummy, because we're gonna get a happy tummy together. I really hope that this helped you. I adore you. Hit that subscribe button. I love you, and I'll see you in my next video.